All right, so the Americas and Polynesia. Over here we have the Aztec civilization in Central America. Uh, we also have the Incas in South America. And way over here is Polynesia, which is kind of this group of islands in the Pacific Ocean. We'll go through each one of these. So the Aztecs uh, developed in the 1200s on the Yucatan Peninsula. Again, the Aztecs are right here in Yucatan Peninsula. Um, and they're going to share a lot of the heritage of the Mayans. Um, now their capital city was Tenochtitlan. Um, and now there were a lot of other uh, Aztec cities, but these other cities were allied with Tenochtitlan um, and they paid tribute to them so that the uh, capital city wouldn't come in and sort of take them over and destroy them. Uh, there were a, uh, Tenochtitlan had a large army. One, it kind of kept these other cities in line. It kept order. It also kept uh, the many lower classes from, um, from rebelling because there were a lot of rich people and a lot of, I'm sorry, a few rich people and a lot of poor people. Um, so they were responsible for getting, uh, keeping order, but also for getting sacrifices. They would go out uh, to the sort of local tribes around the empire uh, and capture warriors to sacrifice. Uh, they were polytheistic, again, kind of carried on that tradition of the Mayans. Uh, they were polytheistic, they believed in a lot of gods, uh, and that each day a different god would carry the sun across the sky, and that these gods were nourished by human blood. So they, uh, the Aztecs were kind of extremely violent. They, were, they killed thousands and thousands, or sacrificed thousands of people uh, each year uh, so that they could nourish these gods. And here you can actually see the Mayans, uh, I'm sorry, the Aztecs uh, sacrificing this human and his heart and his blood sort of floating up in the sky towards the gods. They also created um, Chinampas, which are sort of small islands uh, in the middle of the lake. Uh, Tenochtitlan was actually built in the middle of the lake and it had these land bridges that went out to the city. Uh, but they create these raised beds, uh, just like the Mayans did in the swamps uh, to grow corn. But also, they even took it a step further and they actually created floating beds too. Uh, so they would uh, make little sort of boats out of reeds uh, and then pack it with dirt and they would grow their crops uh, on those chinampas. Now, the Incas uh, are in South America. Now, I'll go back to the map. Here's the Indies uh, and the Andes Mountains. The, the Incas in the Andes Mountains. Okay. And here is uh, their main city, Machu Picchu, or one of the main cities. Cusco, Machu Picchu are the uh, main cities. And Machu Picchu, you can see here, is in the middle of the mountains. This is on top of a mountain. And you can kind of see the great scenery behind it. Uh, but it was kind of a harsh environment to live in, or at least a rugged environment. Um, now, the kings were believed to own everything in Incan civilization, so there was no idea of personal property. For example, this shirt would not be mine if I lived in the Incan society. It would belong to the king. No idea of personal property. The kings owned everything, so they could take whatever they wanted at any time. Now, this idea of kings owning everything included people's times, which they called mita. Mita was a forced servitude, okay? Labor that people had to um, give to the king uh, for a certain percentage of the year. Different kings required different amounts of time. Uh, but uh, they had to go work for the king. And one of the big ways, uh, a lot of things that they did were building roads and bridges and things that would sort of connect these mountain uh, cities. Uh, but they also worked on agriculture, this Waru Waru agriculture. Now, in these mountains, they would create terraced uh, farms, so these kind of steps cut into the side of the mountain uh, so that they could grow crops in the mountains. But they had to uh, dig these long irrigation canals through rock uh, through the mountains so they could bring water to their uh, civilization. And this was uh, very labor-intensive, uh, digging up rock and carrying it through the mountains. So, uh, Mita was really necessary for the Incan people. Uh, they also were polytheistic. Uh, they also believed in many gods like the Mayans and the Aztecs. Now, and they did also sacrifice humans, but their human sacrifice was much uh, less than the Aztecs. They only sacrificed a small amount of people each year. Here you can kind of see them offering other kinds of blood sacrifices as well. Um, now, they believed that they could gain a better afterlife 
uh, by expanding territory. So for the kings, it was really important, uh, and for the warriors, that they actually go out and conquer more places, these kind of local tribes, and expand uh, Incan authority. So uh, they believed that they could increase their um, possessions in the afterlife. Also, the Incas allowed uh, women much more independence from their husbands. So while they still were subservient to their husbands, um, they had a lot more freedoms. They could go out, they could work on their own, they could divorce them, they could um, do a lot of things without being completely submissive to their husbands. And Polynesia, go back to the map real quick. Here's Polynesia, this group of islands out here in the Pacific, and it includes Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so this small group of islands was populated from the 600s to the 1300s. So it really started back right, right at the end of the classical period. And the way that they populated these uh, islands was outrigger canoes. So it's a canoe uh, that has a little pontoon on the outside. And that pontoon was really necessary because it kept the canoe from being overturned um, in ocean waves. But it was also uh, really important because it could travel really fast. Uh, it could go uh, over 100 miles a day, so they could travel long distances from island to island, uh, getting across the Pacific Ocean. Here you can actually see uh, these Polynesian people fishing from their canoe uh, while they were out, because a lot of times they'd have to be uh, out on the water for, for days and weeks as they were traveling from island to island. They were mostly polytheistic, but their polytheism really uh, was very closely tied in with animism as well. Uh, and there was one group of people in particular that uh, populated Australia and New Zealand. And this group of people were known as the Maori. And here you can see a picture of the Maori with their kind of typical face, facial tattoos. But that is it for the Americas and Polynesia.